In this session, we're going to be discussing the seven conditions which are required to enable you to speak Lashonara. Yes, sometimes it's permissible to speak Lashonara, but in order to fulfill, in order to be able to speak Lashonara, you have to fulfill seven requirements. Only if you fill, fulfill all seven of them will it be permissible to say your Lashonara. So let us see what these seven requirements are and then we could judge if it's actually feasible or how practical, practical it actually is to be able to speak Lashonara. Let's run through them and then we'll elaborate with some examples. The first one is you've got to make sure the information is entirely accurate. Number two, you've got to make sure that actually a halacha was transgressed. Thirdly, you've got to first rebuke the subject before you're allowed to say the Lashonara. Number four, you're only allowed to say for constructive purpose, literally LS. We'll be giving examples of that soon. Number five, you've got to make sure the information is entirely true, no exaggerations. Number six, there cannot be another way of achieving your toyeles, your constructive goal, other than saying Lashonara. If there's another way, you cannot say Lashonara. And finally, number seven is to, you cannot be causing the person you're speaking about more damage than the Aloha would say he is obligated to receive. So let's run through these seven conditions and give some examples. The first one is, you've got to make sure that the information is entirely true, which means you've either got to have seen the incident firsthand, or you investigated and found out that it was true. If you only heard it through hearsay and you still feel there's a need to say it, you've got to make sure that your listeners know that you've only heard it secondhand and it's only hearsay. Number two, make sure that an actual transgression took place. A halachic transgression took place. Very often, things could seem or look bad, and you could think that something bad took place, but no actual halachic prohibition was prohibited, was transgressed. Therefore, not only is it important to know the, to fulfill the first condition, to know that information is accurate, you also got to make sure that you interpret that information accurately, and something wrong was done. The third condition is you got to rebuke the subject first. Before you can tell other people, you first got to go to that subject and rebuke the person to make sure that they will, to see if they will repent. Only if that fails can you go in and, and say the Lashnara. So for example, let's say you saw a businessman cheat his client. Before you tell the client he was cheated, you go to the businessman and rebuke him gently in a way where he will listen and ask him to return the money. Only if that fails can you proceed to tell the person. Number four, make sure the information is entirely true. You cannot exaggerate, you cannot embell embellish the information for effect. You can't give introduction to make uh, for effect. The information has to be precisely the way it transpired. Furthermore, if you know a piece of information which will lessen the disgrace of the person you're speaking about, even though it will not change, the, uh, the, the, even though it will not have an effect, on what you're saying. If you omit that information, you will have caused the listener to be more disgraced than he actually had to have been. So the fourth condition was make sure your information is entirely true and you haven't exaggerated in any way. This condition is especially difficult if it's an emotional issue. Number five, your intentions have to be constructive. If God forbid you're going to enjoy the disgrace of the person you're speaking about, or you have a hatred for that person, it's forbidden to say the Lashonara. You need a, 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 a constructive intention. These include either to protect the victim, or to prevent other people from copying the aggressor, or maybe even to cause the aggressor to repent after he's disgraced. If those are your intentions, it's fine. However, if you have a benefit from saying the Lashonara, it will be forbidden. So for example, let's say you have a customer and you want to tell him that your competitor is dishonest. Are you allowed to tell him that your competitor is dishonest? Since by telling him that, you probably will cause the customer to come to you, so you're having a gain from saying that Lashnara, it'll be forbidden to repeat it. In such circumstances, if you feel there's a constructive gain to say it and you're going to get some benefit from it, consult a Toyota authority where it's permitted. Number six. There has to be no other way to achieve the goal. The only way to achieve the goal, this to Ellis, which is, we just mentioned, 
will be through saying this Lashon Hara. So, for example, if you saw a shopkeeper cheat, a, 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 cheat customers, if you can prevent customers from coming to that store without mentioning the incident which happened, for example, you could say other stores have better deals, go to other stores, you are forbidden to say the Lashon Hara about this transgressor. Only if there's no other way of achieving the goals other than by mentioning the story, then you can mention it. And finally, you cannot cause through your, even if you fulfill all the first six conditions, you cannot cause the person you're speaking about more damage than he would be uh, obligated to the Allah. So for example, if a thief, a Kuntah Allah would have to pay $100, and by you saying Lashon Hara, you're causing him a $500 loss, he's going to lose his job, it's forbidden to say. So as we see, there are seven conditions which allow you to say Lashon Hara, but they're very difficult to fulfill. So why is it the person who, like the Dovda Melech says, Mi Chaim, who desires life? Let's protect our tongues from speaking any bad.